wise woman once wrote, there is no progress without compromise. And I think that's especially true when it comes to relationships. On today's case, Mr. McCoy says that while he loves Ms. Brown, her refusal to compromise even a little has driven an almost literal wedge between them. He says her extreme commitment to COVID era precautions has left them both unable to connect physically or emotionally. Oh, I wonder how this is going to turn out. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of McCoy versus Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. McCoy and Ms. Brown. Mr. McCoy, you say you love Ms. Brown, but you're not willing to have a relationship with her and her face mask any longer. Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Brown, you say Mr. McCoy needs to be more compassionate toward you and your fear of getting sick again. You are hoping to save this relationship. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Brown, I am very conscious of the COVID era precautions. I'm a heart disease survivor, and so I wore a mask a lot longer than a lot of people, and I still test. I tested today for COVID, and so I can assure you that I'm safe and sound, and Robert is safe and sound. Are you comfortable talking without the mask, or you want to keep the mask on the whole time? I need to keep it on. I just hope that this will shed light on. It's not a matter of a uh, choice mm -hmm. at this moment for me right now. It's a matter of physical disability without I understand. It. That's why I asked. And we can still do the case with the mask on. No problem whatsoever, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. McCoy, clearly there is some issues that you all need to resolve. Why are we in court today? Your Honor, I love Brenda. It was... When I met Brenda, it was love at first hug. <laughs> She really lit up my world. Did I, you meet during the pandemic? A little bit after. Okay. So when I seen her, I had a vision and, and I saw great things in Brenda Brown. You thought she was the one? Yeah, I just felt like, you know, if, if God gave me a vision of, of somebody, I, I think that's the one. We've been together for two and a half years now and, and if she doesn't take off her mask, I don't think we could connect physically, emotionally, or even spiritually mm -hmm. because there's like a divide in between us. I understand exactly where you're coming from, Mr. McCoy. Ms. Brown, you did meet during a time where we were in the height of the pandemic, and so pretty much everybody was being cautious. What was your experience during that time? Because something tells me that health-wise, you faced some additional challenges. Why don't you share that with the court? Yes, Your Honor. When we met, I had gotten sick already. So you got COVID? I, I, I don't know. I did not not go to the hospital. And this was in 2019. Okay. Before it had a name. Ah, I understand. And two and a half weeks later and one conversation with Jesus later, I started being very serious about wearing my mask and staying away from people and trying to do what the media and the news and everybody was saying to do mm -hmm. uh, in order to keep myself safe. And I have an elderly parent. Yes. In 2021, he went out to a New Year's Eve party and he convinced me that getting in photos with people without my mask was a good idea. Again, Your Honor, I felt stricken to debilitating hurt and, and, and cough. So you got COVID again? I think so. Didn't go again. Did you test? Mm-mm. It's almost like, Your Honor, I didn't want to know. I just wanted to make it through it. And I promised myself if I made it through it that second time that nothing would get me to remove this mask in what I feel is unsafe <clears throat> situations. Now, Ms. Brown, let me, let me play devil's advocate here. Have you been to the doctor to be diagnosed in the last three years about this? Yes. And I, what has the doctor said? I'm, I'm healthy as a horse. So, Mr. McCoy, I turn now back to you. Obviously, this is an impediment to you all being fully involved in a relationship. Am I correct, sir? Yes, Your Honor. How does it manifest itself? Everywhere we go, people talk to her and they say, why do you have your mask on? People are just asking about the mask and it's like become the focal point uh, when we're out and about. Now, I don't mind the fact that Ms. Brown has a mask on out in the public because if she is concerned about her health, that's one way to try to protect herself. However, if that is something that happens when you all are in your own home, that's a consideration. Tell me how your household operates. 
Your Honor, she wears her mask everywhere 24-7. We've only kissed twice. What? In two and a half years? Four yeah. times. What? She wears it at home, in the bed, even during sex. Wow. <gasps> Mr. McCoy, do you test regularly for COVID-19? Yes, I, I test at work and uh, wherever I go. Why do you have to wear the mask in your Your Honor, it's not a choice. I can't help it. It's physical. It's... I can't operate uh -huh. normally without it. Mm -hmm. I thought that's how come we were together, is because I finally had somebody that understood it's not a choice. Ms. Brown, it's a choice not to get health. Mm -hmm. I understand that right now what you're telling me is you are emotionally and physically hamstrung yes. with this mask. Yes. You have to keep it on in order to function. Yes. Or but I... that's not a healthy way to live your life. You do understand that. You need to be able to release whatever is going on within you so that you can live a full, healthy life. Your Honor, I understand that at some point in time that I'm gonna have to get out of this. Like, I, it took me three years to get here. Mr. McCoy, how has this affected your relationship? Well, one thing, it's hard for me to connect with you because I can't see you. And it's hard to pay bills when we need two jobs. Sometimes she won't even go to work because she can't take off her mask. Well, most employment situations will allow you to continue to use your mask. Ms. Brown, are you not able to work? The only way I would be able to work is give me my own office and leave me alone the entire day and just field calls. And how do you expect to take care of yourself if you're not working? I started doing um, Uber Eats because their mask policy falls right in line with what I need to do. They... So, in other words, you can be in your own car by yourself with yeah. your mask, drop food off, and keep it popping. That's yes. what you're talking about. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, she started delivering food, but she always make excuses not to go to work. It's too hot. My car don't got AC. Um, you know, the traffic is too much. She didn't go to work for four days straight. So, in other words, she has found an alternative, but it's not even an alternative that she follows through with. Is that correct? Correct. Ms. Brown? Your Honor, we did a video shoot for a particular young lady. I look over at him, and he is hosting full wood. Oh. I'm still confused as to how you all connect physically at all. You said you've only kissed twice. Do you have intimate relations, Mr. McCoy? Your Honor, I make enough money to pay our bills. And I happen to be dating M Moses over here, who she takes is our last. She's trying to control me, Your Honor. She's trying to He's control He's taking me. our last and helping people. Help me to understand what she's talking about, Mr. McCoy. Well, like, she won't go to work so that she can follow me to work. Huh? Every, every, everywhere I go, she want to go. She listens in to my phone calls, and that sometimes she'll mishear something on the phone call and then fuss at me about, about what she heard, and it, it wasn't even the complete thing that they were saying. It sounds a little bit paranoid to me. It, it, it's just frustrating because she's just right over my shoulder while I'm editing, writing. I'm in school as well. So are you suggesting she's standing there physically? Yes. Ms. Brown, what is that about? Your Honor, I seem to be on a different track as Mr. McCoy because our relationship, I thought, was built on me learning and understanding what it is that he needed so that I can assist. He needs you to move your behind away from standing over him. That's what he needs. <laughs> he needs you to quit crowding him. He your needs Honor... you to give him space. That's what he needs. Yes, Your Honor, he needs his space. In a 400-square-foot box, there is not anywhere for me to go. No, there are places for you to go except over his shoulder. Now, guess what, Ms. Brown? Yes. I will completely accept that you want to wear your mask in the public. That's 100% on you. But you're going to have to take some responsibility for your own behavior. 
okay? And your own behavior is this man wants to be treated like a man and not like a child. I'm sorry. And, Your Honor, one time I was looking at some footage that someone sent me, and she's looking at what's going on in the video. They're at a swimming party, and they're shaking their butts and stuff like that. She just went off and started yelling Your at Honor, me about that. Your Honor, we um, did a, a video shoot for a particular young lady. I look over at him, and he is hosting full wood. Oh. So, in other words, he may say he's not interested, but his body was telling you something different. Yes, Your Honor. Now, fast forward to we are laying in the bed, and he shows me a video of all of these girls. I'm not upset about him looking at the women, but when I catch you asking about the same one that you were physically attracted to, what am I supposed to think, Your Honor? I'm still confused as to how you all connect physically at all. Is You said you've only kissed twice. Do you have intimate relations, Mr. McCoy? Uh, Your Honor, I don't feel intimate because of this. Like, this mask is really putting a wedge in between our relationship. I'm trying to figure out why you all are together, because it sounds a bit toxic to me. Oftentimes, when I see that there is a family in a uh, crisis, I will call on a expert to help me. And so today, I've asked Neronica Shaw, who is a licensed therapist, to join me to help understand what's going on within this family dynamic and possibly give some insight into ways that we can accomplish your goals today. Your Honor, I, I want to kiss, I want to hug. I want to make love, but I don't want to mask there. If she can't get over it, I, I got to keep it moving because... I completely understand that, Miss Miss Brown. What oh. would you require from him in order for you to remove the mask? You haven't told me what you need. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Ms. Shaw, can you do me a favor and state your name and credentials to the court? I'd like the plaintiff and the defendant to know why I asked you to come. My name is Naranika Shaw, and I'm a licensed professional counselor. It's my understanding that you have worked in the area of addiction counseling and mental health counseling. Is that correct, Ms. Shaw? That is correct. So, Ms. Brown has been experiencing a tremendous amount of trauma. How can Ms. Brown begin to overcome her fear of becoming sick again or catching some infection that could be devastating to her health? So, start by setting small goals such as identifying what's a perceived threat versus a real threat in high-risk and low-risk situations, such as possibly going to a park without your mask Mm. and enjoying the outside the environment and inviting your loved ones and support system with you. Ms. Brown, do you think you ever tried that? Yes, Your Honor. And I would like to say this is the most I've been out of my house since all this COVID thing began. And my love for him has drawn me at least out of the house. So, Ms. Shaw, Ms. Brown needs to have some tools to come out of what her anxiety is. Can you share some of those tools? When you are in environments and you feel the anxiety increasing, you can try some simple deep breathing exercises while reassuring yourself that you are in a safe place. Some grounding techniques, grounding yourself to where you are and bringing yourself back into the present moment so that you're not just consumed by your thoughts of fear. So basically it's it's sitting down and saying, I'm going to calm my nerves and I'm going to enjoy the opportunity to have a conversation. So you have to tell yourself these things constantly, am I right? Right. Ms. Shaw, how can this couple begin to reconnect emotionally and physically without pushing Ms. Brown away? Being able to see each other as a whole person, and that can be difficult seeing them as a whole person behind a mask. So slowly starting to reintroduce yourself into taking off that mask. 
and your partner is trying to get closer to you but can't do that behind that mask. So to make those changes, you're gonna need some forward movement. And I think setting those small goals with those different techniques can kind of help you start to trust even being around your partner, even at home. Ms. Brown, you have to become a whole person um, individually before you're going to be able to bring a person to a relationship. I would suggest that getting some therapy to help you navigate this would be a good start. Would you be willing to yes. try therapy? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Shaw, I know that this is your area of expertise. Would you be willing to have some one-on-one -on -one sessions with Ms. Brown to help her start this journey to self-healing? Uh, absolutely. Thank you so very much, Ms. Shaw. I appreciate your assistance today. You're welcome. We're not even at couples therapy yet. We're at individual therapy because Ms. Brown has got to help herself get rid of the fear and the anxiety. And Mr. McCoy, I'm not sure if that will work for you, but it will take some time. You have to decide whether or not you're willing to go on the journey with her if she's willing to get some help to move past what this impediment is. Your Honor, I, I want to kiss, I want to hug, I want to make love, but I don't want a mask there. I just feel like if she can't get over it, I, I got to keep it moving because... I completely understand that, Ms. Ms. Brown. The thing with Mr. McCoy is his habits are terrible. He is in people's faces. They're spitting on him. He's eating behind So people. what would you require from him in order for you to remove the mask? You haven't told me what you need. Oh, for him to be tested. If you know you have a partner who's scared to death, maybe you can tell the other people to back up in your life. Mr. McCoy, Ms. Brown is saying that in order for her to remove the mask, she needs to see that you are controlling your personal space and your own behavior that make her feel that you're at least taking seriously her struggles with her anxiety surrounding being infected. Do you hear what I'm saying? I definitely get it, Your Honor. The thing is, is that we were designed as people to be around each other. 100%. We thrive off of each other, and I don't want to miss that connection, too. I, I like to shake hands. I like to be around people. So, Ms. McCoy, you've come to court because you say that Ms. Brown's germophobic and controlling behavior has ruined every aspect of your once-loving relationship. And I hear you, sir. Ms. Brown, you say you're not ready to lose Mr. McCoy, but you want him to be more compassionate to what your needs are, and I hear you. Mr. McCoy, sometimes relationships have run their course. You have needs as a man, as a father, of what you want in your personal relationship. You have to determine whether or not Ms. Brown can fulfill those needs. Your needs have changed, sir. Absolutely. You need something more. And there's nothing to be ashamed of that you need something more. You miss being in a full, intimate relationship with the woman you love. And, Ms. Brown, you may love Mr. McCoy, but until you can become a whole person, you can't love him in the manner in which he needs to be loved and deserves to be loved. And if you can't jumpstart your path to recovery in a way that's going to trust him, then you're going to lose this man. I'm letting you know that. But understand, it does not impact on his character. He's a good man, but he has needs, and those needs are un not unreasonable. He wants a full partner. And if you're not mentally healthy enough to be that full partner, my suggestion is you work on yourself so that you can become a mentally healthy person that gets into your next relationship in a way that is healthy for the two of you. I wish you the very best, both of you. Robert, this is a very sad uh, result of COVID-19, but this woman is facing some serious mental challenges. It's, uh, it's a difficult situation. I mean, uh, I wish them a lot of luck, but even myself, I don't think I, I wouldn't wait. I couldn't wait for that. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with him saying my needs have changed right. because, you know, life is too short. I hope she gets the health that she needs, but he needs to move on with his life. I believe so. Made in Georgia.